the order. Do I know the way our conversations have gone every week? It was a <laughs> One of the Orville. Is what? that what? What type of porn is that? Is that like cuckold <laughs> or interracial? Uh, it was quite good. I quite enjoyed it. I don't know if you guys watched the Orville, but oh god, look at this faggot trying to podcast. Welcome everybody to a brand new edition of Orvillecast. I am joined, as always, by the marble granite to complement the beautiful glass backsplash on my kitchenette renovation. Shane, Money Man, the Admiral, the Doctor, the Man of Many Johns. <laughs> what is up? Hey, man, it's good to be back. If you notice, I said the Man of Many Johns uh, instead of Many Jobs. It's because you have a lot of male prostitute clients. And representing <laughs> is our homeboy, Salmon. Salmon, the engineer, what up? Hello, I'm... And finally, Damn. joining us all the way from the desolate hills of the Austrian Alps, where she's been hiding in a Nazi base since 1954, Miss Kayla. What is going on, girl? I still don't know why I'm here. Uh, is that what happened to Helen Keller? I mean, and Frank, shit. <laughs> Which, wait, yeah. <laughs> wait, what was that? I Helen hate Keller? you guys. Who would win in the fight? <laughs> what, like, okay, before you say, obviously the blind deaf chick would lose. Retard strength? consider that second of all helen keller not a lot of jews are good fighters and uh they and she was malnourished from living in an attic and helen keller didn't she she lived to be like 90 and she like wrote things to the president and shit yeah i guess you didn't frank... know who didn't live to 90 <laughs> <laughs> yeah wasn't Anne frank like scrounging for like rubles or something to buy like a bra with holes in it <laughs> the rubles i don't fucking know listen all i know, I know is, is that and what do you think i read and frank is a beautiful wonderful tale about a young jewish girl getting exactly what she deserves all right let's start off this week talking about the shape of water <laughs> God. God. Oh, honestly fuck. it's so funny because it wasn't this bad last week or the week before no now, it's because shane's back <laughs> you're saved, blaming me we saved all of I've this said the two uncut. words we were so good. Shane, I was like, he's actually been well behaved. And Shane was like, no way. He's like, and say, now you... say the F word. And I'm like, fuck. He's like, no, the <laughs> other one. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Bad influences. Uh, All right, Shape of Water. What are we talking about? And I'm Achilles. Fish fucking. Uh, Bad influence is the name of our theme song. <laughs> okay. Shape of Water has the most Oscar nominations, which is bizarre. It has more than Lord of the Rings with 13 Oscar nominations, including Best Original Screenplay. Now, I like me some Guillermo. People sometimes say they love me some Guillermo. Those people that say that have not seen all of his movies. But I have seen all of Guillermo's movies. I've been up and down with Guillermo through his entire career. And he has taken me on some weird journeys. But fish fucking? Fish fucking might be the first. <laughs> this might be the first, first, first fish fuck. Like... It was a little weird with, like, everyone else in the BPRD and Hellboy were all, like, weird, super-powered creatures. And then there was just, like, just one normal white chick who just happens to shoot fire. And she's like, oh, I'm a freak because I shoot fire. I'm like, you live next to a fucking fish and the devil. <laughs> and you're like, oh, I'm weird because I have short hair. And she ended up <laughs> fucking Hellboy. That is weird. Yeah. And she was able to sleep with Hellboy and there's no qualms about it. People didn't get up in arms between race mixing between red and white. And I don't mean like the Native American. Um, but this one, this is like, imagine Hellboy, but instead of trying to fuck Hellboy, she fucks Abe Sapien. That is exactly Ew. what The Shape of Water is. That's my review. Uh, Kayla, let's hear your review on the movie. <laughs> Oh, man. So you didn't like it? No, I loved it. Oh, did I not say that? Uh, <laughs> 7 out of, 75 out of 100. That's my rating. I really liked the movie. I thought it was fun. Oh, I just like, it was like one of those things where I'm like, this is a really beautiful movie. Fucking weird. <laughs> but, you know, the acting was lovely. I really like Sally Hawkins. I think she's brilliant. But uh, what else it was is she in? weird. A movie called Maudie about an uh, artist from Nova Scotia. And then oh, I don't know what Nova Scotia. Hey, it's actually a really good movie. Um, Ethan Hawke's also in it, and he's actually good. Which is oh, weird, Ethan but... Hawke, yeah. Oh my God, Ethan Hawke, the gentleman from Training Day. Still alive, still alive. 
Did you know that the director of Training Day would go on to make such classics such as Bright and Suicide Squad? I mean, what else do you need? <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so out of 100, how would you rate Shape of Water? Out of 100? Yeah. That's how I we do it like last a solid week. 90. Ooh, wow, you really like fucking fish. That's where the 10% lost me. Um, I thought that like... girl was French. Okay, for those who don't know, The Shape of Water, spoilers ahead. Woo. The Shape of Water, uh, there it's about a janitor or maid or custodial engineer, as they call them now, um, in like, what is this, the 30s, you'd say? Or what, what time period is this? 1960s, Cold War, right? Yeah, 60s like 60s. it is. I can't tell the difference. They had cars in the 30s, right? So <laughs> she's, from, she's from old times. Uh, and Lady from old times uh, discovered, like, she works in this facility. And in this facility, they have this, they captured this sea monster creature. And they're torturing it, trying to get information out of it, trying to, like, you know, figure out what it is. And she, cleaning up, is cleaning up the blood and stuff and takes pity on the monster and she starts giving him food and they become friends and this teaches us the most vital like this is why it's a love story because it teaches us the most vital part of a relationship which is if you give a man food he will fuck you yes very true hmm. what if you give a homeless woman food no i hear that you're not supposed to give homeless women food because god wants them that way but i can't <laughs> be sure I just like have a. Oh, feeling... you have to satisfy God's kink before you satisfy yours. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is so weird. Um, oh, uh, plot twist: uh, the girl is deaf. Oh, she's Helen Keller, right? She's playing Helen Keller. This is just she's a not documentary. deaf. She just can't speak. What's the difference? She can hear. She can't speak. She's a mute. It's a huge difference. She's a mute. She Maybe she can't, can't speak because she can't hear people saying words. She can't speak because somebody ripped her throat apart when she was a baby. No, th her throat wasn't ripped apart. Those were gills. That's what those scars were. That's why they opened up at the end of the movie when he took her underwater and healed her. So I, I haven't actually seen this film, but I will ask a question in context. Are we of... selling this movie well? <laughs> it says <laughs> on gills her and transforms I thought we had her next scars. scars. In he context, her next that's scars. what I thought it was transforming the next scars. I didn't think that was healing her because she was a fish to begin with. No, she that, was. I they guess... opened up and flapped. She's a fish lady. She was also to a fish save lady. Her life. That's why she She's wasn't home. able to speak. She can only speak underwater, like Ariel. It's just the Little Mermaid. So it wasn't fish fucking then, because technically she's also a fish, so it's not weird. Yeah, but she was in human form, and her gills were all, like, clogged up. You know when those gills get clogged <laughs> up. Ladies I don't know, right? man. Um, that's the way him. I interpreted it, but that could be a different interpretation. But it's a really that's sweet... That's a cool interpretation, though. Yeah, I like it. Uh, it's a really sweet love story. Um, and it's like... You no, know, you know what I do is, like, when people are like, oh, Guillermo del Toro was directing The Hobbit... And people come to me, like my friends would come to me as like the resident Lord of the Rings nerd to be like, is this a good or bad thing? And it was a bad thing at the time. It ended up being a bad thing because he ended up ruining the pre-production, which caused a horrible movie that Peter Jackson couldn't save. Not that Peter Jackson wanted to save it. I'm getting on a tangent. Um, what I'm trying to say you is never. we should revoke the vote for the Dreamers. No, what was I saying? Um, this movie's good. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Well, I will pose a question to the group as someone who hasn't seen this film. And someone who in hasn't context, lost a train of thought. In, in context of Guillermo del Toro's work, yeah. where does where would you put this? Ah, in, yes. Like, is this you. more like a Pan's Labyrinth type of feeling and vibe? I, I'm assuming it's not a Pacific Rim. This, this like is why you're here. Like, where does, it, where does it sit? So when people, when I was, this is what goes back to it. So when I was telling people that the guy directing this movie is the guy who directed, and I'd have to pick a movie for them to tell. So if they were really excited about it and I wanted them to be less excited, I'd be like, this guy directed fucking Blade 2, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Although, and the funny thing is, I love Blade 2. I fucking love that movie <laughs> you can name a chapter on the dvd and i could start quoting it immediately like i i have the blade Seven. sword above my bed i was lying to you don't call me on it <laughs> um, and uh but then when I, when they were weren't excited i would say pan's labyrinth because those like the two spectrums of movie um you know maybe hellboy hellboy 2 was really good but uh mimic so mimic versus pan's labyrinth pan's labyrinth is this beautifully constructed like um alice in wonderland style story a journey a girl goes on whereas hellboy is this weird schlocky movie like 
Pacific Rim a little bit. Pacific Rim is way worse. Hellboy is excellent, actually. So let's use Pac Rim as the example. It was a schlocky, kind of mistranslated adventure. It's almost like those animes that have really bad fan subs, and you're like, what the fuck am I reading? Which actually goes back to The Shape of Water. Remind me about that. Um, and uh, I don't know. It just comes across like... I don't think because he, he's Spanish that his like vision when he's making American films comes across perfectly, but he makes these like European style films and they're beautiful and wonderful. And this period piece is right in between Hellboy and uh, Pan's Labyrinth because it even nods to Pan's Labyrinth several times, like when he's sewing up his face. There's a famous scene in in Pan's Labyrinth, and the girls actually look quite similar. So. Um, I think that like he definitely borrowed both of those worlds and made something which actually ended up being an extremely well balanced movie. And if you take anything away from this movie, it's just it was balanced quite well. I thought. In an interview with IndieWire about the film, Del Toro said, "This movie is a I'm because I'm not going to do a fake Spanish accent. This movie is a healing movie for me. For nine movies, I rephrase the fears of my childhood, the dreams of my childhood, and this is the first time I speak as an adult about something that worries me as an adult. I speak about trust, otherness, sex, love, where we're going." These are not concerns I had when I was nine or seven. Huh. Wow, he was a non-introspective child because I thought about that shit all the time. Also, it's weird that he started the interview with, I'm not going to do a Spanish accent and then proceeds to do an American accent the entire time. I thought that was neat. I think that was a nice little yeah. wrinkle. So speaking of this beautiful <laughs> Oscar, possibly Oscar winning, I mean, it has a one in 13, chan- or a 13 out of 100 chance of getting it. Or no, 13 times five has a 65 65 uh, well he's never won 13 and 65 Oscar, he? Yeah. no he did for pants didn't he oh. i can't remember maybe but it might have just uh, been for like Ray, effects or something oh um, uh, let's see let's so so that's funny because he for sure plagiarized all of it in 1969, Zendel wrote a play called Let Me Hear You Whisper about a female janitor working in a secret government-owned laboratory in the 1960s who eventually tries to rescue a sea creature from being killed after the creature's refusal to cooperate with the researchers. Now, Kayla, you've seen this movie. Does that sound familiar to you? Hmm. Also yes. set in the 60s. <laughs> That sounds like the plot of a Legends of Tomorrow episode, also maybe. Is that show that dead show. yet? No, that's it should unfortunate. Be. Apparently, Arrow many. is supposed to die pretty soon too. He won yeah. a BAFTA for Penn's Labyrinth for best film not in the English language. Hmm. He Here won a Golden Globe for best director for Shape of Water. He won a bunch of old things for other shitty little but he's never actually won an oscar he has not won an oscar yeah so maybe this is his year and that's why they put him up for so many potentials possibly i guess i don't know i don't like that idea that like directors have their times when they would like get up and it totally is they totally do that shit all the time they do because shape of water is not a good a movie as pan's labyrinth is it's a great movie i really enjoyed it top to bottom it was super well balanced and I think it had a lot more balance than Pan's Labyrinth, which is one of my problems with it. But it is not a better movie. Well, that, that's the thing with any of those award shows, right? Like, it's such a... There's, like, a politics behind it, and there's... Who jerked off who? Who jerked off who? Who didn't jerk off who, and who didn't get the role because of not jerking off people? Did you suck a wiener, just touch it. It's all it's all crazy. All oh. relative. All nope. relative, and who gets the biggest award? Del Toro's so Pinocchio project has been shelved. Because no one wants to give him money for it. Well, because no one wants to see it. <laughs> Have you guys seen his other movie that came out recently that was not good with Loki? What the fuck is that movie called? Crimson Peak. <gasps> Crimson Peak. Loki. Truly horrible movie. Yeah, it was awful. It was so bad. Like, how do you trust him with a budget that big if he's going to make dog shit like that? He doesn't explain fucking anything. This guy I actually to wants burn. to be a fish farmer. I'm like, God <laughs> damn it. Is This is the dumbest fucking movie I've ever seen. But you know what? I'll give it to Tom Hiddleston. No matter what shit movie he's in, from Kong Skull Island to Crimson Peak, that nigga gives 110%. He does not slow down. He gives everything on to every scene that he acts. And you gotta give that nigga credit for doing that, because it is hard to be that serious 
while it's acting really hard stuff. to act in shit movies oh totally it's so hard it's the worst thing in the world like everyone's all like oh james mcavoy is great i'm like yeah james mcavoy is great because he's never been in a bad movie like the worst movie he's been in is chronicles of narnia as mr tumnus and he was pretty good in that and that movie was pretty good yeah he was <laughs> so... x-men apocalypse <laughs> uh yeah, yeah that was a bad movie but he was excellent in it like there's nothing that you can say about his performance that didn't make that elevate that movie and that's the same thing with fastbender fastbender mcavoy are way too good actors to be playing fucking magneto and <laughs> professor x in this like yeah. child oh. gay child rapist fantasy movies <laughs> well so what? were brian Ian singer McKellen and patrick yeah, stewart pretty much. i'm not saying ian mckellen raped kids i'm saying you know Brian Singer allegedly <laughs> did, which sucks because that guy is a great director. I wish the people that I admired so much would stop being pieces of shit. You know what Raping I mean? Raping people would be nice. Well, like, yeah. you know, well, I, mean, I, I love, you know, um, who are some of the people? Been? Robert Nepper is amazing. He's the greatest teabag in um, Prison Break. He gets uh, accused of sexual harassment. Oh, yeah. I, I, I like uh, James Franco for better or for worse. Like, I'm sure he's a douchebag and I would hate him in real life. But I think he's funny, and I like that he made fun of himself, and this is the end, and I liked him in Pineapple Express. Uh -huh. And it sucks that he's like a child rape, like an attempted child rapist. I liked Glee. Glee. Pucking Glee was my favorite. I thought he was the best uh -huh. character. He's the worst human being. And then look yeah, at Hitler. That's... Hitler did a bunch of good things, and then he kills his dog before he dies. Fuck that guy. <laughs> Why was it always... <laughs> it's the rule of internet arguments. They always come back to Hitler. What just happened? We we accidentally stopped recording and went to an uncut, but we're back. We were talking about The Shape of Water and why it's a plagiaristic movie. Because he fucking. St stole the ideas. What do you think about that? Do you think it's plagiarized? Do you think this thing might be overblown? I mean, now hearing those details, they're startlingly similar. Okay, now that we've heard everyone's thoughts on that, let's move on to our next bit of news. Like, our reaction to that, it was brilliant. What was What, what did I say before I left? Do you think it is plagiarism? I don't know, like <laughs> La CIA or LCIA, you know, uh, wanting some sort of, you know, bio <laughs> Did you weapon. call them La CIA? That's <laughs> what I'm Mexicans so called them, La CIA. No, what? They, that is the name of a hard drive company. <laughs> the, the La, no, that you're thinking Lacey? of Lace. La CIA is what they call the, the fucking, the fucking G-men. And know? what do you call uh, those hard see? drives? Lacey. Lacey. What, no, what, Lacey what is L A C E Y. And it's like some guy knows a little. L A C E I E. C I E? That's seven vowels in a row. That means what? that it's pronounced so. the shoy. It's seven letters. Well, it's the, the L is actually two. It's an I and a sideways I. Kayla, is it my fault for making this go off the rails or what? Oh, God. <laughs> Circa de la CIA, la Agencia Central de Intelligencia. CIA is there like five times in their name for it. So. I'm, uh, I'm actually shocked no, at revealing that you're Mexican. That's crazy. <laughs> well, I mean. Your beautiful you're asking... Spanish accent. <laughs> so perfectly in tune. You're, you're asking if we think that this was plagiarized Doesn't after really hearing matter. the way that i described it and hearing the premise of that book uh how do you feel Is i feel like it's a gen not generic but it's a non-specific enough premise like <laughs> come on a sea monster look at what? any x-files well, fucking episode monster? None of them were. You know what the funny thing about the x-files is they were secret agents not janitors of the 30s okay I thought it was in the 60s when the Cold War... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the thing about the Cold War is... You know why they called it the Cold War? Because when things are cold, they move slowly. And that war moved slowly. And it started in the 30s. And hasn't ended. Still. I don't know, man. I feel like if you watch enough sci-fi, no matter what series you're watching, be it X-Files or Stargate or Star Trek, you're always going to find episodes that it's like, this is like this exact episode from this other series. Yeah, and remember like when... This is like the exact episode Trek, from that series. Remember in Star Trek when they fucking went to a planet of Nazis? Uh, and I, I think they did it again later. I remember in Angel when they did that, which was even weirder. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's just regurgitated by everything else. <laughs> I don't know, I think, a, I think a janitor is what you want to do if you want to like really 
put in like someone a who has fish access. out of water scenario <laughs> that, like you know that these people seriously have are out of their depth and they just <laughs> out of their depth out. you're fucking <laughs> <horrible>. <laughs> again, but no they they have no like uh they have no you know uh, ulterior motive towards this creature. You're right. It's probably super original. Okay, guys, click on the link that I just sent you in Facebook because uh, I'm recording this on our stream so our viewers at home can see it as well. But this is real specific. My team and I always had trouble managing our tasks. Wow, this looks just like it. I'm actually watching a Grammarly fucking ad right now. <laughs> okay, are we, wa are clicking are we it now watching or the whole thing? It? No, we're not going to click it, it but I, I'm uh, I'm putting on a mute and I'm going to flip around it so people can see. I encourage you guys to do the same. Just skip ahead it's a little bit. It's 12 minutes. You're right. You can put it on mute and skip ahead. That's the funny thing about YouTube. Skip ahead to what? What time? Just, just like skip through it. Um, take peeks at it, Kayla. This is more of a yours thing. You can kind of feel that you're getting like this noirish Guillermo esque tone. Oh, yeah. She's going in. This is an award winning short film made by a student where this custodial engineer in this like facility finds a sea monster, falls in love with him, and they fuck. So it's like this one not only feels like she's wiping up the blood in the same way in one of the scenes. Oh, wow. Um, oh. At four fourteen. The way that they first encounter each other and like the the colors and, and and hues and everything that they use are nearly identical. Like it is really fucking close. So now that's not one, that's not two, but that's three. And we know that this is just a classic trope of creature from the Black Lagoon. But uh, okay, I don't know. On the Wikipedia page for Very Shape similar. of Water says the idea for Shape of Water formed during Del Toro's breakfast with Daniel Krauss in 2011, with whom he later co-wrote novel Troll Hunters. It shows similarities to 2015 short film Space Between Us, and also to Rachel Ingalls' novel Mrs. Caliban. It was also primarily inspired by Del Toro's childhood memories of seeing Creature from the Black Lagoon and wanting to see Gilman in the film's co-star Julie Adams to succeed in their depraved sexual he ripped, romance. He ripped the idea of his own childhood memory inspiring the movie from it. If you read it, it would make a lot more sense. It's a really good book. I highly encourage people to read it. Um, Holy shit! It is like the exact same as the short film, though. You're yeah, right. it's really close. Like before, Holy I was shit. I was all skeptical, hippo eyes at first, and then when I watched the short, I was just like, ah, well, fuck. It actually, the short actually is a better version of the movie in a weird way. I'm gonna watch it now. I'm yeah, like, it's really good. Like you did a really fantastic job. Um, not now. That it's being a good said, artist copy, great artist steal. Oh fuck you and your Apple bullshit! All right, stop forgiving <laughs> Del Toro. Del Toro blatantly ripped off a lot of shit here. We need to call him on it. Yes, everything is borrowed. Everything is an homage. This one seems a little blatant. I'm actually I'm calling some shadiness on this Del Toro ish. That's all I'm saying. I you guys that can disagree with me, and that's what we're talking no. about. Wait. Oh no, but Del Toro honestly just makes passion homage films all the time of shit he loves though. It's like, true, but like more so than Tarantino, he's just like this was cool. I'm gonna make movie with this thing and this thing and this thing and this thing and this thing. Yeah, you're you're very much right. He is he's weirdly tonal, and that's why I was really I was really worried about him doing um, the Hobbit because I feel like he's gonna do a lot of these weird European references or cadences that everyone's all like, yeah, that's weird. You know what it is? It's like hearing Tommy Wiseau speak. Is like watching Guillermo <laughs> movie sometimes because it's like slightly off translation. Funny thing about Shape of Water. So my friends had a huge made a huge mistake and had a kid, and so now <laughs> when we hang out, we have they put the kid to bed at eight because he's a pussy and can't stay up late, and uh, so we have to watch movies really quiet in their apartment. So we watch the movie with subtitles on, and and like just really low volume so that we wouldn't miss any of the dialogue, but the subtitles aren't official. Because the movie's not technically out, right? So the subtitles look like they were fan subtitles or something, or maybe. But they're they're like Portuguese or Spanish, and then translated into English. So they didn't quite line up. And instead of saying "Yes, sir," they would say "Yes, Majesty." Yes, Your Majesty. <laughs> like that was how the translation came across. <laughs> so it was weird though, because in certain parts they wouldn't even they wouldn't even translate it. It would just still be in Portuguese, <laughs> and we're like. Well, fuck like they didn't even do the whole goddamn movie but it was so funny watching this movie with like this really shitty dialogue underneath it when you know that that's probably just ripped off from the script uh del toro made like that that is written just like in the spanish translate to english is exactly the way he wrote this movie and everything else is just fixed 
but I highly <laughs> encourage you to watch that movie with shitty subtitles. Um, do you guys want to get in some news, or we'll talk about a little bit more some movies that we saw this week? But, but wait, like, yeah. whatever we think about The Shape of Water, can we all just agree that Michael Shannon looks like a serial killer in it? He looks like a serial killer in fucking everything he's in. And yeah, I love like Michael, Michael Shannon. He's but great. he looks like a serial killer. My favorite line from Michael Shannon like... in any movie ever was when he said, Now you may have noticed that when I urinated, I washed my hands before I touched my piece. That is because I believe everything else is dirty and I don't want that on my pecker. Best line in Shape of Water. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't wash his hands after. Nope. Um, but yeah, uh, do you still encourage people to see this movie now knowing that's probably a ripoff? Yeah, but I mean, isn't everything a remake? Oh, a God, that's a, such a shitty excuse. <laughs> when people blatantly rip off things, that's neat. what I said. <laughs> All right. Okay, okay, but except uh, but don't uh, directing a actors. film is much more than just the narrative premise of the film. We're talking cinematography. We're talking yeah. mise en scene. We're talking about sound choice. We're talking, yes, the performance actors bring to it. So I, will, I don't know. I will say that the color toning and the mise en scene from the other short film... They they tie in so closely, it's suspicious. That's all I'll say. But I'm um, not discouraging people from seeing the movie. Highly encourage you guys to watch it. It's a great date movie. Fun movie to watch with young children because they can learn about sex from fish. I thought you made the young child go to bed because he's a pussy. He is a pussy. He would. St- you know what's funny? I was. He was like, uh, like superheroes or whatever. He mumbles because he's a child. And then I was like, oh, okay. You like superheroes? Let's watch Blade Two. Nah, the minute that guy was like ripping off people's heads, he's like, "Ooh, this is scary!" I'm like, "What a fucking pussy!" Should have made him watch Dark Man. I, I should have given him Sids for being such a pussy. Speaking of Sids, <laughs> uh, Guillermo del Toro's <laughs> best friend. I am just kidding. In case they ever hear this, his parents hear this, because I love him and he does think I'm his best friend, which is funny. Um, but speaking of Guillermo del Toro, his uh, best buddy Peter Jackson had one of his movies named The Most Violent Movies Ever Made. Um, yeah, Peter Jackson's movie Brain Dead was the most violent movie ever made, but it's with puppets, which is even weirder. But it is... That doesn't hmm? make sense. Why? Violence can be animated. What do you got against can puppets? be puppets. Yeah, it doesn't matter what it is. What, but you wanted I mean, him to murder is, real is people like in the film? puppets, or is it like very clearly puppets? No, like they're comically puppets in part of it. You just need to. What's it called again? Brain Dead. Brain Dead, uh, 1992. There's a. Oh, yeah. I uh, like a bunch this. of zombies. They start attacking because they got bit by a rabid Sum- Sumantran rat monkey. It's fucking crazy. It's Splatterfest. It's monsters. You wouldn't believe that the director of Lord of the Rings would, um, would have made this film, but it is fucking great. Meet the Feebles is an actual puppet movie. This one just used puppets as, like, the monsters and shit. Um, that one's even funnier. So if you are a Peter Jackson fan, if you're not, actually, go watch Meet the Feebles, Frighteners, and this weird fucking movie, Brain Dead, and uh, it'll really change and your watch opinion. Dead Alive. Yeah. Watch Dead is, Alive. Dead Alive. Oh, isn't God. it crazy Peter Jackson? Isn't it crazy Peter Jackson was basically a New Zealand Sam Raimi before Lord of the Rings? Absolutely. And uh, so funny, yeah. Sam Raimi went on to do Spider-Man, and then he went on to do his trilogy, and it's like, it's, it's incredible. But that's what they're doing. I really like Frighteners too. Frighteners was great. Michael J. Fox. Yeah, Frighteners scared me a bit as a kid too. Like uh, I remember it being comedic and because fun. Maybe I don't know if it would hold up. It was like it came out. I, don't know, I was like twelve or something. Yeah. So like I think some of the scenes in it, like he took uh, a lot of the tropes, like um, Freddy Krueger coming out through the wall, um, and like amped it up to extreme, where the ghost is like running through every part of like the fucking wood and the carpet and everything, and. Yeah, it was cool. Like, I thought that movie was really fun. It had some really stupid performances that I loved. Um, but for most violent movies ever made, can you guys name the most violent movie that you have ever seen that maybe should have made this list? Um... Now, one that comes to mind is Old Boy. That movie is real fucking vicious. Um, I would think Hostel. Passion of the Christ. Passion of the Christ for sure. Rambo 4. One person dies every 36 seconds on average. Lucky number <laughs> 11. Shut up. And finally, um, one I, a, a Serbian film, which is disturbing in all the ways that I don't want a movie to be disturbing. 
Wasn't there a movie that had Liam Neeson in it and Liam Taken. Neeson's acting wife? Taken two. They were No, no, no. Taken they were like down. in a they were like in a cabin and then they both get possessed and they start fucking and cutting each oh, other. Oh, uh... Antichrist. Antichrist, but that's not Liam Neeson. It's uh, Willem Dafoe. Yeah, you stepped on my oh. joke, though. I was going to say Taken 3 returned. <laughs> Thanks. Why, well, does his, why does his daughter keep being stolen? Like It's not her every time. The bad parent. I think in the fourth one, he just had his wallet stolen, and he just went overboard. <laughs> oh, like John Wick 2. TV <laughs> show now. John Wick 2 is a continuation of John Wick 1. He's still mad about his dog. He's not over his dog. It's been two years for us. It's been ten minutes for him. I wouldn't be over it ever. I wouldn't. I st- my dog died like maybe like four years ago now, and I still like when I get up in the morning, I still walk to the fucking laundry room to fill her bowl, and then I realize that she's not there, and then I go into my room, oh, I hold her leash, and I cry. What? That is the saddest thing possible. <laughs> I'd be funny if it dog, wasn't man. true for most of my life. Um, <laughs> let's move on with the news. Is my dog Skip sadder than that or not? No, my dog Skip. The the best part about my dog Skip is the massive orgasm we have watching that dog violently die. <laughs> um, Yu Gi Oh the movie is headed back to theaters. This is huge news. Is everyone fucking excited? They're coming in, bringing in 4K. It's gonna be heroic Yu Gi squaring off and against his arch rival Kaiba. Them. No, no one's excited. No, Yu Gi Oh movie. Two days only, back in 4K in theaters. I'm just surprised. Okay, so Yu-Gi-Oh! wasn't my era. I'm a Naruto kid, which is a little bit earlier than that. And so for me, like, my fandom and love of Naruto is one thing. But I, I realize that there's another era of kids that loved Yu-Gi-Oh! But I wasn't into it. But to see a movie return from, like, what, fucking 2004 or something to theaters? Like, that's amazing. That's, like, Pokemon-level fame. And I say, good on you, Yu-Gi-Oh! I'm not sure what you're about. Not sure what happened in any of your episodes, but I'm proud of you and your fans, and I'm glad that they're keeping the fandom strong. Speaking of fandom, you guys are still there, right? <laughs> it's been really quiet for a while. Cause I can't hear you. You keep cutting out. Yeah. Oh, no. You guys should have warned me that I was cutting out like an hour ago. I, I said it, it twice, me. and I wrote it down. I didn't hear you ever doing that. <laughs> Tom Hanks is set to play Mr. Rogers in his new biopic, You Are My Friend. Thoughts and feelings, Kayla? I don't know. I like Tom Hanks, but is he Mr. Rogers? Uh... Only Mr. Rogers is Mr. Rogers. Shouldn't they just call him Mr. Know. Hanks? <laughs> but I mean, like, I feel like that. Talk to somebody else. I got to look something up. Okay. Who else would it be though? If if you had to cast Mr. Rogers, like you know, Tom Hanks is the most uh, I don't know, like beloved nice guy kind of actor, you know, type His of face individual. Is kind of flat though, like just based on looks. Like yeah, but so was have... fucking Mr. No, Mr. Rogers had a big bulby nose. Listen, but who? But who else would you cast in that role? That, that is a fair thing. question. Uh, Tom Amandis. He's not as famous, but he looks more like. Mr. Rogers. Who the fuck is Tom Amandis? If he looks like Mr. Rogers, he's for sure a pedophile. Doesn't look like Mr. Rogers, but like the way that he acts in, um, like the way that he acts, he has like a very soft demeanor. He's from a beloved show. I what show? Everwood, but he's also an Arrow. If you watch Arrow, he is Phyllis' dad. Um. Oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. You mean the Hacker Man? Yeah, he's a great actor. He would be perfect. He said I hacker. I was going to say James, Jimmy Stewart, but he's dead. He's been dead for like 20 years, so I don't know. So CG, CG Jimmy Stewart instead of Mr. Rogers? <laughs> yeah. Jimmy Stewart literally looks like Mr. Rogers. So um, I'm sure Tom Hanks will do a fine job. These are all excellent suggestions. Unless, Shane, you want to offer another alternative to Tom Hanks? Or do you think that he's perfect? Uh, I would say... I don't know if he's perfect for the role. He doesn't really look the part, but in terms of an actor to cast in it, um, yeah, I, I, I honestly can't think of someone off the top of my head. Can I offer someone for Shane? Sure. Paul Rubens. <laughs> <laughs> That's not bad. Oh. <laughs> that ain't bad. Um, now, I've noticed something kind of uh, a common thread between the people that you guys are picking. Uh, they're all white males. They're old. 
They're all men. Well, Mr. Rogers was a white No, no, no. It is time for more black and female actresses to get roles. I say Oprah plays Mr. Rogers, directed by a woman as well. Done. Spike Lee. Um, no, wait. We get it directed by the Wachowskis because they're transgender. Boom. Wow. I'm really very concerned about your obsession with Oprah. I love Oprah. You see, this is the yeah, problem. I so, know. my mom was a black woman in the 80s and 90s. So, like, to her, Oprah, it, it, there's like, the, when you come into her home, there's a picture of Jesus, and right above that is a picture of Oprah with an even bigger halo. Like, she broke down barriers for women, especially women of color, and inspired a lot of women of color that were told, like, their whole lives that they could just be one thing, that there's something else. And she was, like, one of the biggest role models to do that. So she's like, a, sure. she's bigger than just a cultural icon, and she was a cultural revolutionary. And that's why I think we should cast her as Mr. Rogers in the You Are My Friend biopic. If cast we're going with that, shouldn't we be casting Nichelle Nichols as Mr. Rogers? That's even more racist. <laughs> I would say Nichelle Nichols is way more influential than Oprah. Oprah. Really? <laughs> Or Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Actually, you know what it was? I wouldn't have picked Whoopi, Whoopi until I saw her cameo in Little Rascals, and then I knew she was, you know, one of the ones. Whoopi! Whoopi! Uh, so, are, do we have any Cloverfield fans here at all? Nope. Nope. Um, so, Kayla, at that point, when we have your soundboard, you can play crickets when I ask a question, <laughs> and all of you guys just sit there in <laughs> silence. Why don't you guys just shout no? I love Cloverfield. No, no, I asked which no. one. I didn't like the first one. I like. I didn't mind the, the second one that was made, even though it had nothing to really do with the first one. But that's neither. I didn't here. even watch the second one. The first one it was okay, I guess, when it came out. The first one had the design is not interesting. I thought he was okay, and I think that they had one of the best viral marketing campaigns ever for a movie with Cloverfield. So is this third one just going to be more found footage garbage? Or well, the second one no, wasn't second found, one footage, found footage. So that'd be real weird. So the way that Cloverfield works is that they're treating it a bit like the Twilight Zone. Each of these movies are separate um, movies, separate universes. They'll have common things tied together, like slusho references Aliens. or certain corporation references. Um, well, we don't know that like Clover, Baby Cloverfield in um, the original movie. What is movie this, was Split? A, was a... Yeah, kind of. Um, was, well, Split's a direct sequel, actually, though, right? Yeah, I wouldn't call it a direct one. It, it is set in the same like, universe and features the same, the same characters, yeah. But this mm. is different universes. Um, so this one is... Um, a Ten Cloverfield Lane was an isolation horror, and it is fucking brilliant. It is really Not fun, good, top to bottom. Ending is weird, which I love. Uh, no John Good... What? Say again, sorry? <laughs> Should I just get off the podcast? Why? Oh, we can't spoil shit for you, I guess. No, I just, I just want to know, like, does the girl get fucked by either of them? No. All day. Every um, day. Okay, that's all. But John part. Goodman's okay, performance is Oscar worthy. Like, he is inspired in that him. movie. It's fucking incredible. Um, so, Ten Cloverfield Lane, fantastic. So, Cloverfield Three, we know is coming soon. We don't know anything about it, but we also know that Cloverfield Four has just finished filming. That doesn't Wait, make what? what three or four? Four. So three is not even out yet. We don't even know what three is about, but the fourth one's already done. But remember, all of the Cloverfield movies are just separate movies. They're just sci-fi movies kind of set in a weirder universe, but in their own kind of contained thing with a common theme kind of running through them. So I'm really fucking excited. Um, it's going to be possibly called Clover Cloverfield Station, and it'll be take taking place in World War II. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm I'm fucking hyped as shit for this. It doesn't seem like as anybody gives a fuck. Like, as long as it's more like the second one and not the first one, I'm excited. I like the first one. The first one's its own. I thing. hated it. Why? The found footage thing, like I was, I'm just over it. Like it's I, just shaky cam garbage, and I don't fucking. Care. They didn't. They use it cleverly in that movie, though. They did it quite well. I mean, there's. I don't mind found footage movies whatsoever. Like I, I think they're fine. I actually enjoy them. Um, Sometimes. I, I get pissed off when they do them incorrectly or do them poorly, like in Crank. Um, where, but oh god, yeah, yeah. Oh, remember that scene in Crank when it was the found footage <laughs> shit? Yeah, I forgot about that. Um, but uh, when they do it tastefully and it's done smartly, like I mean, I hated uh, Paranormal Activity Four because they fucked up Ghost Dimension with like really shitty camera work. 
And then for the fifth and sixth one, they did really good. So, I mean, I'm, I'm back in the found footage. I don't give a shit how it's filmed. I just want a good movie. And uh, that's uh, Cloverfield's a good movie. Um, are you guys fans of Bill and Ted? When I was a small child, I thought it was entertaining. <laughs> I mean, what? Are they bringing them back? They are bringing them back, it. which I am excited as fuck about. Are they bringing back Keanu Reeves? They are bringing back yeah. both Ke- Canoe and Bill S. Preston Esquire, a.k.a. Alex Winter. Are they, they bringing back any money death? For it. Can they bring back death as well? They better bring back death. I think they said they had. A, they might be able to do a cameo with George Carlin of some footage that they didn't use from the previous films. That's weird, because Rufus... Just let Rufus die. <laughs> That's all I'll say. Let Rufus die. Um, Bill and Ted face the music. So they've been... Uh, oh my god. The director is the same director who did Galaxy Quest. Dean Parasot. Okay, so it's gonna be amazing. And it's produced by Steven Soderbergh. So it's gonna be amazing. It's going to be the best movie ever. I am... <laughs> So fucking excited. Uh, Bill and Ted face the music. Uh, this is one of my most anticipated movies. I love Bill and Ted as a kid. Although it came out 27 years ago. And obviously I was like born. But when I grew up enough to see it. I really really loved it. So I'm super excited. But my brothers were into it. So I'm a little bit biased. Great great feedback everyone. Um, Next up. I mean what else is there? Is Bill and Ted. There's. We can't argue that it shouldn't be made. Yeah, you could. You could be like, Bill and Ted sucks, or I don't give a fuck, or I hate Well, me. those people deserve to burn in hell, just like the progenitor of the AIDS virus, which is Kate. <laughs> I hate you people! <laughs> <laughs> so, remember last week we talked about how X-Men Dark Phoenix, like, it's saying everywhere on the internet that's directed by Simon Kinberg, but I have an article saved that said it was Brian Singer before all this shit happened. Oh. Um, well, uh, well, anyway, Simon Kinberg is directing uh, Dark Phoenix. Hans Zimmer is going to be scoring the Dark Phoenix. Now, he's known for Man of Steel, Amazing Spider-Man, Superman vs. Batman, Dawn of Justice, um, Blade Runner 2049. I think this is such a crazy casting for it to do Hans Zimmer. But... Um, I'm fucking super excited because the soundtrack to Days of Future Past is beautiful and the first movie was gorgeous and I, I don't know. I'm really, really hyped. I think score adds so much to a movie and having Hans Zimmer represent the Phoenix Saga, I think that'll be really magical. How do you guys feel about it? Ray, let's start with you. Uh, You mean just specifically the Hans Zimmer pull or the movie overall? Well, both. Now that you know Hans Zimmer's on it, you know that Simon Kinberg's directing it, you know that's going to be the end of the series, and it's going to be Dark Phoenix. I mean, Wait, wait, is it actually the end? I thought they were going to make more and more, like, he was going to up, like, here's another 10 years past, here's another 10 years past. Maybe they will. I don't know. But the, well, that's the thing. Everything that, uh, with what happened with um, Brian Singer has thrown a wrench to everything, so it's tough to say what's well, going on isn't happen. isn't fox being sold to disney so in like two years time anyway all of the have to be rebooted X-Men anyway and marvel yeah. properties are going to go back to the and that's what i heard is that this was going to wrap up this version of x-men and they'd be reintroduced in the avengers universe how awesome would it be if deadpool just showed up in the avengers universe and oh they just well deadpool is too R. valuable for them to like just get rid of like... yeah they'll cross that over and they'll also cross over spider-man because it's a you know group production they're paying billions of dollars to buy Fox. I'm sure they're going to use all of the properties and make one, I don't know, rebooted universe. We can finally get a good Fantastic Four film. We yeah. almost did until Fox stepped in and ruined a good movie that was already shot. And then uh, we shot a horrible one. Hans Zimmer is probably my favorite um, film composer, I guess. Is that what you call them? Yeah. Yeah. Theatrical score composer. Well, I guess his his work is pretty prolific, so saying he's my favorite is like saying, Oh, I like Beta. <laughs> he's like, I like Pirates of the Caribbean and Gladiator and Inception. It's like, yeah, we get it. You like good music. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, the movie overall, I don't know, like they fucked up the Phoenix last time. I don't know. Yeah, but that was that was another rapist. They oh my god. I, listen, I'm never happy when like someone I love hey, like Kevin Spacey. Hey, how do you think I feel? I wanted Rush Hour 4. I'm Fuck never you. Rush Hour 4. I'm I'm saying I was thrilled. I was fucking thrilled when Brett Ratner got busted. I'm like, I always hated that motherfucker ruining X-Men, ruining Do you fu- think Jackie Chan can make Rush Hour 4 without 
him. Yes, Jackie Chan could get any other. Who directed Friday? Get them him to direct it. Get anyone but fucking Brett Ratner to direct Rush Hour Four, and I'll love it. Bernie Mac died, right? Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> I was gonna say Bernie Mac. Aww. I wanted Bernie Mac to be the last samurai. Uh, but, um, Hans Zimmer, you might, I think, probably is most known for Inception and the Dark Knight. Would that be his, like, biggest? No, Lion King. Lion King. Yeah, I don't know, man. I just think that, like, you got the best composer in the world. You guys have a ton of money behind you. It's the end of, like, a pretty solid series with the exception of Apocalypse. Like, I'm starting to get more and more excited for the Dark Phoenix saga. And I'm happy to report that. Because I have some horrible news. Are you guys ready for some so, horrible news? But with the Dark Phoenix. Yeah. Like, from what I'm seeing here, because uh, we technically already had the Hellfire Club, technically, so we can't use them again. So this isn't actually anything like the Dark Phoenix art. This is just, she goes nuts, right? Yeah, but I've always wanted to see Phoenix Unleashed. I want to see power leaking out of Jean Grey. Like, that is the beauty of it. You saw I in The agree. Last Stand. Yeah, but it wasn't good in The Last Stand. She felt like um an animal, not a force of nature. Like she's supposed to be a goddess when she's in that mode, and we see it in the comics and stuff. And I want to, I want to see that. So anyway, let's go get to our bad news because this one's rough. <sighs> My favorite character, Gambit, has been pulled from the production schedule for now. Really? Yeah. Ooh. So why we were hyping the shit out of this? We had Channing Tatum, we had a new director, but. It looks like it's not going to work out right now. There's a lot of setbacks. Um, and yeah, there's not no news as of yet. They were supposed to be pushing back or pushing this forward because of the success of Deadpool and Logan. And Gambit would tie into that universe as well. Um, but it just got pushed back, pushed back. And now it's not even getting off the ground. So I'm not sure what's happening. They just know that it's been shelved. I am heartbroken, and uh, yeah, this is the worst news I've ever had. Uh, let's see. Uh, it says I think again, right now, it... the release date is June seventh, twenty nineteen. Yes, left without a. That was what they're originally targeting, but now it's saying that they were not going to hit that. It's shelves. Huh. I think it probably relates back to the fact that Fox is being purchased by Disney. Their whole entire 20th Century Fox movie arm and all their intellectual properties they have outside of their Fox News organization, everything's going to Disney. So they probably don't have as much of a, I know as, in terms of like forecasting or making movies that are a few years out. This yeah, movie was they're... stuck in development hell for the last 10 years. I'm not shocked oh, that yeah. it got shelved. To be honest. Um, well, also, like, yeah. can you really... Okay, because they kind of fucked up Apocalypse, right? Very fucked up Apocalypse, but, yeah. So, Mr. So Mr. Sinister is pretty much integral to, like, a Gambit story, but Mr. Sinister is also integral to Apocalypse, so... Well, that's the thing. When they introduced <laughs> Mr. Sinister at the end of um, Logan... Uh, no, uh, which movie was it? x-men no there was just something that said xx essex corporation yeah so they introduced yeah like well nathaniel things. sinister nathaniel essex aka mr sinister yeah um well when they brought that up in was that days of future past yes um when they had that little easter egg at the end of days of future past and then in logan when essex corp is the one that builds the clone wolverine that he fights i thought that was all leading up to tying into gambit because is you know obviously Gambit and uh, Mister Sinister are so intricately tied, and it's a really good setup. Like it's a really good way to ramp up the movie because you're introducing the villain first and the idea of the villain first before you even see the hero. I think that's a really fun way to do it. Um. So anyway, that's on the shelf now. So at least we're getting Black Panther. Hopefully, uh, that won't get fucked over before it hits theaters. Speaking of hitting theaters. <laughs> Um, I love this. So uh, you guys are aware of Octavia Spencer, wonderful black actress, was in the movie The Help and The Shape of Water. Um, yeah. She no. is doing such a baller move. I would do this if I was a baller. She's going to uh, low-income areas of Mississippi and buying up all the tickets for Black Panther screenings. Now, I would, really? I would love to do that, just to go see those poor, disappointed black people's faces when they can't get tickets... <laughs> To the movie. Oh wait, I'm reading this wrong. She's actually giving those tickets away. Oh, but then what's the I point? Oh. Yeah. I mean, I thought I she was doing this as like a money. baller move. Now it seems like more of a pussy move. You're a pussy. You're a pussy. 
Um, no, all joking aside, that's really fucking cool. Octavia Spencer buying out all those screenings. Imagine the movie sucks and all these black people are like, what the fuck is this? And they all hate Octavia Spencer for it. That'd be funny. So, oh, no, so I, like, I, can can I, no white people get into those screenings then? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. I was actually going to ask that question. What about Latinos? Definitely not Latinos. Shane, what were you going to oh. say, bud? Oh, I was just going to say, I really had no interest in seeing that film at like whatsoever. I I was not a fan of because the it features characters Negroes in the in the in the Civil War war movie. I wasn't really a fan of that storyline or his character because he was but from after Africa. Watching the trailer. After watching the trailer and like seeing what they did with Thor Ragnarok and kind of how Black Panther was going in this very like sci-fi direction, I got kind of intrigued. I don't know if I'll go unless we're going to do a review or something, but I definitely was pleasantly surprised by how intrigued I was after watching the trailer, as opposed to just thinking it was just going to be another run of the mill, like type Ant-Man thing, or it's just like you could just see it or not or just forget about it this actually seemed like they were doing something interesting so wow i guess we won't watch the ant-man and wasp trailer jesus (laughs) 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 no i I feel what you mean um i know that ant-man was formula make but it was the best of the formula i thought they nailed that movie i thought that movie was really fun and uh black panther looks like something brand new totally unique i am so fucking excited for that movie. The art design alone, and Michael B. Jordan, I'll go watch it for that. The fact he's wearing, like, that classic X-Men suit with the blue and yellow is so fucking cool. It's a weird nod. But yes, very, very excited. Um, cool. Next up, oh, Kayla, um, if you would like yeah. a job in the, maybe get your foot in the door in the acting industry, uh, more than your foot already is in there, and once you're done with that foot, I need it, I can't tell you why. Um, I think I know a really great place for you to find a job, and they're hiring. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, you might know this company by the name TWC. You might know this as Broad Street Pictures. You might know this as Wandering Hill. But I like to call them by their original name, the Weinstein Company. Now, hear me out. Mm. (laughs) <laughs> they're really trying mm. they've renamed themselves three times and they're still doing it but now they're offering right. breastfeeding rooms free food and a new name it might be the best place to work oh well i mean think of it sounds like yeah it's for me <laughs> think of it this way i mean where's the last place you can get sexual harassed the place that got fucking almost shut down over being sexual over sexual harassment that's ironically the safest place to be <laughs> Is it? Is it? Isn't it? Is it? Isn't it? Um, all right, we have a couple more pieces of news, then we'll wrap it up for this week because uh, we're going long. Uh, but one of the movies I'm most excited for, and I hope Kayla, you are too, the live action Aladdin remake has wrapped filming. Wow. This is the one where you use Was the it, applause. Isn't the white dude the genie? I don't know what that is. The annoying is. dude? You mean Will Smith? I thought there was a white dude as one of these guys. Uh, no, they are oh. all colored. They are all browner than Billy me. Billy Magnuson. He's. They are all me, but browner. Somebody who I don't even. Remember. Billy Magnuson as Prince Anders. Oh, I guess he's supposed to be white, so that's okay. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say there were some. I mean, they're all supposed to be Chinese, uh, Muslim Chinese. So there is that. Uh, Mina Masood uh, is starring as a titular Aladdin. Um, I did not see the. Um, Beauty and the Beast movie, because I'm an adult male. Uh, did any of you guys check it out, and was it any good? I did, and I liked it. It was exactly like the cartoon, except with one extra annoying song that was from the musical. Um, are we... What was the song? Human again. Can you sing oh, it Oh, that me? is also from the film. That's, been, uh, that's also from the movie. It it was cut, but it's been put back in as of, like, 2006. It was also featured... Not my cartoon! It was also featured in the Christmas special of Beauty and the Beast, in which they used some unused footage from before and put it in there and made a movie out of it. Um, Watch that. Are you guys okay with a non-Arab actress playing Jasmine, Miss My- Naomi Scott? Yeah? Anyone okay with that? Yeah. I didn't see Power Rangers yet, and I probably never will so i have no opinion on naomi scott well i'm i'm gonna watch this movie i think just because aladdin is responsible for getting me laid pretty much my whole life 
Um, that's the, if you want to pick up a girl, oh. just find out. What oh, so you scammed a girl and made her think you were richer than you actually were. Yeah, I'm but then sure when she fell in love with me for who I was, then uh, she eventually just took me for what I was, and then I used magic in order to get money so that she'd keep me. Pretty much. Glad so. in a movie about some form of date rape slash fraud. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> I wonder how they're gonna address that in this version. Um, fraud, yes. Date rape, though. Oh well, because you're presenting yourself under false pretenses, and therefore it's rape. Want to sleep with that person. No, yes. No. False no. Yeah, 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 Welcome yeah. to modern feminism. <laughs> Whoa. Actually, oh, uh, welcome to the Canadian Charter of Rights. Because yeah. I look at the criminal law, it says oh. fraud equals rape. Believe me, if you want, if you want an expert on rape, <laughs> raise your guy. I don't know, I, I got a copy of the Charter around here somewhere. Let me go grab it and see if it says fraud equals you rape. You just have it handy, you fucking homo. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Pretty sure everybody on online dating profiles lies about their job. And I'm pretty sure like that... 90%. We have to... Is that all date rape? <laughs> yes. Yes. I on a date because I feel like they're all Did true, you know so that, that when a woman has been drinking, she cannot consent? And therefore, if you hook up with a girl, right. even if she's had one beer, it's rape? All right. What do we got here? Don't tell me you actually she have it, you no. sack of garbage. <laughs> Guarantee of rights and freedoms. All right. Well, we'll get back to you in 20 minutes when you're done fucking going through that. R.V. Hutchinson, Supreme Court Judgment of Control F. Fraud. This is not movie related. This is uncut territory. <laughs> the dissenting judge held that... Con uh, Consent is vitiated by fraud, which means uh, if you lie, you you don't have consent. That's a benefit that I don't have to deal with this because I've never lied to get laid because I'm a virgin. Moving on to films. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for us to be talking about something and then Shane to China in the fucking corner being like, well, actually, it says here in section 6BC. God, I hate you already, you <laughs> son of a bitch. Uh we were talking of Sam Raimi earlier, um, so I read books very fastly, and because of fastly, yes, um, that's why I have such a dis uh, a distinct vocabulary, and uh, <laughs> due to that, uh, I'm actually picked up this these books already. It's called the King Killer Chronicles. Shout out to my buddy Brian for picking that up for me. Um, Sam Raimi is directing this movie for Lionsgate, but I am not sure how you get an 800 giant fantasy movie into one film. Uh, I'm real scared about this movie. Uh, but if anyone could do it, it's definitely our homie, Sam Raimi. How do you guys feel about Sam Raimi taking on a fantasy challenge? It's kind of weird. I'd prefer him to take on a fantasy challenge. Maybe his schlock will finally work out in his favor. That's a problem, because when I... I saw Oz the Great and Powerful, I'm like, what the fuck am I actually watching? Okay, it did not work in Oz and Great and Powerful. No, not at all. Uh, and it didn't work in a lot of his other that movies That movie either. was a flaming piece of shit. And am I supposed to... You're a flaming piece of shit. Whoa, dark. Thank you. Um, it really was. You were right. Are we supposed to forgive Spider-Man 3? I'll forgive Spider-Man 3 when no. the rest of the world forgives 9-11. No. How about that? I'll 3 when I die and still don't forgive it. That might be like the most still hyped think. movie that turned out to be the most shitty, in my opinion. The movie I thought would be the best that ended up being the worst. Is that fair? I read an article recently that told me why spider-man 3 wasn't as bad as i thought it was oh it told you mean. why your opinion was wrong tell him to get fucked yes and i believed it well okay what was the argument i'll hear you out uh let me find the article talk about something else sure today. um let's no! we're gonna run through sam raimi's god damn it Kelly, you're being belligerent tonight um i've been drinking a few or something it's fine don't worry about it uh he worked on the movie obviously evil dead uh and evil dead 2 army of darkness hudsucker's proxy dark man great movie quick and the dead awesome movie a simple plan good movie for the Love of the Game, movie I love. The Gift, not a good movie. Spider-Man 1, good movie. Spider-Man 2, excellent movie. Spider-Man 3, worst movie. Drag Me to Hell, good movie. Oz Green and Powerful, worst movie. Ash vs. the Evil Dead, he did one episode. I liked it. He hasn't done a lot of stuff, to be honest. Since his career began in 1977, he's done like, you know, seven or eight big movies. Which isn't bad, but isn't a lot. He's acted in a lot more stuff, though. So I guess that kind of... And he's produced a ton of shit. I guess that's what you do when you get really big. You just produce everything and don't actually do any of the work. All the money. Uh, while we have those two fucking autists looking up some random-ass information, uh, let's finish up with the, <laughs> my, my favorite news. Uh, what's the least likely sequel you can think of? 
the least likely sequel. Yeah, the one the movies had the most definitive endings, you'd be like, well, there's not really much room for a sequel there. Schindler's, Schindler's List. Jesus oh! Christ! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it happened! You know what that oh, means, that guys? As amazing. per the official rules of Ravelcast, if two people have, speak over each other, they have to share blood, even if they don't have to share the same blood type. It's gonna be very Girl. violent. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. That's so funny. Schindler's List could definitely that have a sequel. Clutch, they had to very find clutch. and kill Hitler. Hitler wasn't dead at the end of Schindler's List. <laughs> oh, then Valkyrie is the sequel to Schindler's List. I would say, no, Valkyrie would be a slight prequel to Schindler's List. Then it'd be Schindler's List. Then it would be Der Utentag. And then it would be Downfall. Which, unironically, is Der Utentag as well. Um... So, okay, Schindler's List is a really great guess, and I don't want to step over that moment. But let's get some more. Some stuff that's really unlikely for a sequel. Maybe... Um, Shawshank? Huh? What movie? Does that have one? Well, Shawshank Redemption? Did it? That would be good. <laughs> what else would be a good one? Hey, hold on. Where's a movie where everyone dies in the end? Rogue One? <laughs> yeah. They ironically <laughs> are going to be making a sequel to that. So you kind of... <laughs> Titanic. Titanic! Titanic! There you go! Titanic. Okay, <laughs> this is a Titanic level sequel. This is this is as crazy as if they were making Titanic 2, where Jack rose from the dead. Ah, that. get it? Rose from the dead? Because her name is Rose. I hate you. And then he comes back and there's like, I need the necklace back. <laughs> or no, when the old lady drops the necklace down in the water, it lands on Jack and reanimates back him. Life. And it comes back for revenge against the children of her ex-husband. I don't know. Something like that. Or, I'm not sure if I, I said this say, yet, I, but I hate you. I was going to say American History X. <laughs> yeah, that would be another weird one to do. The Machinist. Uh, Pi. Uh, well, it looks like that uh, something equally as crazy is happening because Passion of the Christ is getting a sequel. I get he rose from what? the dead. I get that. But this is fucking Isn't that the crazy. not interesting part? Because doesn't he just rise and he spooks some people? Then he tells his pals, yo, peace out, man. I'm going to read you. Dwelly Nelson music. I'm going to read you the entire gospel of Mark concerning the crucifixion, his burial, his death, the apostles, Mary, the rebirth. We're going to actually read the entire thing in its entirety right now, right from the Holy Bible. I have my Bible handy. So it's it's a a fantasy film? Jesus was killed. Uh, buried, or sorry, was killed on the cross, buried, and rose again to his apostles three days later. That it sounds like a good piece of fiction. Oh! oh wait, wait, wait. But, but, but my main question is the theme song going to be Jesus Walks? <laughs> yes! That, that would be such a missed opportunity if we did not get Kanye West having Jesus Walks. And But guess who's... But I mean, like... Um, the funny thing is that this movie actually is magic because not only are they raising Jesus from the dead, they're re- raising Jim Caviezel's acting career from the dead because he's coming back, baby, to play Jesus, and he's angry. I'm fucking really excited for this movie. I can't even imagine what it's about. If there was, isn't this closer to the Last Temptation then? Well, he's coming back pissed. <laughs> well, maybe, but like Passion of the Christ was like two titties short a snuff film. It was definitely just like yeah. Jim Caviezel getting beaten over and over. And this was another instance where all throughout the States, churches were buying up theaters so people could go watch this film. Um, I, and it's one of the highest grossing movies of all time and one of the highest debuts of all time. And it was the highest, uh, highest grossing R-rated film in North America, still to this day beating Deadpool. Um I think the correct answer to your question was Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> yeah, okay. There you go. That's not true. I'm pretty there is a sequel in a play actually. Is it about Tybalt? Cuz he also dies. Nah, I, don't know. I should know this. Bad bad actor. Whoa, racist. Um I am fucking excited cuz not only will this movie not make any goddamn sense cuz the last movie had no story other than him getting the shit beaten out of him for that and it was R rated, which means that this sequel about him coming back what the actual fuck is going to like it was is going to be r rated again how do you make an r rated jesus sequel where he just comes back from the dead and teaches a bunch of apostles how to speak different languages by making flames appear above their head and introducing what we call lent or advent i don't know one of those two anyone else go to catholic school i can't remember these things oh no it was a show that they made 
based on a sequel to okay it's still so the same done. thing this is i mean please i need some backup here is this not the dumbest fucking thing that you've ever heard in your life and i want to hear what you guys ideas of what it could be about i thought the first one was the dumbest fucking idea i've heard in my life i mean clearly it's about zombies so that would be cool if it was about zombies and it was actual zombies i'd be down Jesus Christ zombie stuff. Yeah, but what is Jesus going to do? <laughs> no, here's a Jesus zombie oh, movie. Oh, oh my God, I know what this is. Okay. It's it's a prequel to Valkyrie. Jesus <laughs> revenge on <laughs> the Jews that killed him. Oh my God. So he waits like 2,000 years and puts his plan in motion. He you started the Third Jesus Reich. Hitler? Yes, at the Did this no, is the post credit no, scene. Springs behind Hitler. Even better, oh let's God. make that the post credit scene to The Passion of the Christ 2. Jesus is back and angry. He's shaving in a mirror, and when he, like, washes his face, he comes back. It's just a Hitler mustache. And it said, <laughs> Jesus will return in Schindler's List 2. <laughs> Fuck you, Kayla and Jane. Do you remember that part where you said you didn't want to go to hell? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> that's all I got for this week. We got to wrap it up. It has been too long. I have not eaten dinner. You have not slept. We had too many technical difficulties because Shane showed up and made everything fuck up. You <laughs> son of a it bitch. happens. But now that we have this new setup, as you guys can hear about me uncut, we'll definitely be doing that. Episodes will be available to download at rawfulcast.com. We will be streaming live on Twitch and Ustream every week, uh, usually Wednesdays. People still Xbox, use Ustream? Apparently. Um, what else is available? You can follow me on Twitter at Achilles. Visit us online at rawfulcast.com. Subscribe to us on iTunes and Amazon. And wherever podcasts are downloaded, we are now on Stitcher Radio, so you can subscribe there. And yes, there is people that listen on Stitcher. That was pretty cool. Uh, but we just had an episodic. We'll have an actual permanent channel on there where you guys can download everything. And yeah, if you have any suggestions, keep them to yourselves because this show is perfect and I don't need you. All right, anybody else have anything to say before we sign off? Simon, do you want to plug yourself and where they can find you online? I am on Twitter as at Salmon Rider. Also, in defense of Spider Man 3, it's just a stupid, dumb comic book movie, and that's why it's good because Fuck it's you. not. No, it's not trying to be like a comic book, but in the real world, it just puts realistic characters. In a crazy Zany's conic book. You're dead to me. Yeah, that does not uh, forgive or excuse anything in that movie. And if anything, it makes me hate the movie more. Uh, Good. Because you know what movie did do that? The Hulk. Okay. We can talk about that movie. That's actually a great movie and everyone's <laughs> an asshole. Uh, okay, because this dude who wrote the article just says his wife cried when, like, possessed Peter slapped Mary Jane and, like, the whole thing between the friends because it's like... It's it's realistic that like Peter, you know, fucking forgets Mary Jane's actual, you know, important shit, and like it's just a break a real relationship story inside of a. Oh my god, I hate vaginas. Film. I hate them. I'm a huge fan of them. Terrifying, but a huge fan. A bit like the movie It. Uh, next up, Kayla. We're actually, you know what? Because of quality, we'll let Shane go first. Shane, <laughs> <laughs> where can they find you online? I'm Shane. You can find me at Dr. Raffle on Twitter. Hey, Kayla, where can they find you? Kayla Quinn underscore nine on Twitter or Instagram. Uh, hey, thank you so much everyone nine. for listening. Oh, we have a... I couldn't get the original name. This was a weird choppy one, but I had a lot of fun doing it. <laughs> if, if, if that means anything, I had fun doing it. And I think this new setup will look, work a lot better in the future and my laptop won't skiz out. Because it turns out it was updating. And now it's updated and it works. So Stop using potato internet. Next Please week, we will be talking about Ghost in the Shell, Creep, The Shape of... Oh, wait, did that? Bright, The, the Disaster <laughs> Artist. We'll be watching the trailers for Mission Impossible 6, The Purge, Dundee, Ant-Man, I Kill Giants, Cured, and the best 25 films of 2017. If you want to see all that more, tune in on Rafflecast next week. And until next time, we remain podcasting. Beautiful. Boom. Pressures of life, colliding and suffering, but this is no way to live. When the ones you depend on are pushing and pulling you down. So far from everything I thought I ever knew, that something has to change and things will never be the same. You tear my mind. 
Tim.